Firefly Blue Ghost, separation confirmed. This is CBS AOS, stand by. We have acquisition of signal with the Blue Ghost Lander. My name is Fairsberry, and I'm the Director of Spacecraft Mission Management here at Firefly Aerospace, and I'm on the payload console for Blue Ghost Mission 1. My name is Alan Butler. I am the Blue Ghost AI and T lead, and for the mission, I'm on the systems console. So we are in week six of Blue Ghost Mission 1. We're prepping for descent, which is kind of the big Super Bowl for us. Uh, that's happening on Sunday morning, and uh, so everything up to this point has just been getting ready for that. LOI-3 was our final lunar orbit burn to get us in place for descent. So that put us into a nearly circular orbit with a 100 kilometer periloon, which is right where we want to be when we hit that breaking burn for descent. For LOI-3, we actually scheduled the command to be done while we were in a calm blackout. And it was about 27 minutes that we had to wait to acquire signal again and to make sure that everything went nominally for that burn. It's a little nerve wracking when you're doing these commands in a calm blackout. We've practiced these things enough that they were able to go as planned, but really we're, we're just waiting for a time period to come out of a calm blackout, reacquire signal, and then recapture all of the telemetry during that outage from the lander and look at that and make sure that everything is still nominal. We're you know, able to get all of the data down during that time where we're outside of a calm blackout. This week so far feels like another week in the office. There's a lot behind us. We've gotten through a lot of milestones to get here. And so we're in the, the stages of final preparation, uh, looking at procedures the last couple times, running through the last few simulations and rehearsals. The anxiety is starting to, to tick up day by day, but everyone's feeling really good about where we are and ready to nail it. Throughout the mission so far, we have brought down 24 gigabytes of data down. So that is inclusive of payload data, inclusive of all of the imagery data and all the telemetry that we've gotten down from the lander. The total amount of payload data that we've brought down is about three and a half gigabytes. I'm really proud to say that we've met all of our mission requirements to date for the payloads. We're doing health checks, we're preparing them for descent operations, we're preparing them for lunar surface operations to make sure that you know everything is right where we want it to be and we can send that command to autonomously do our in entire descent portion of the mission. Everybody's feeling really optimistic about Sunday. It's been a lot of preparation to get to this point and there's been a lot of anxiety and a lot of milestones to hit, but so far we've, we've hit them and so everybody's feeling some really cautious optimism right now, but mostly excitement. We have 10 payloads on this mission. Nine of them are active instruments. They have powered data interfaces. We've been able to check all of those payloads out. We've powered them on. We've gotten them data back. The last two weeks of the mission is where we're there to make sure that the payloads are getting everything that they want to get out of this mission. So all the science data we can get them, we're going to get them. Uh, so for the systems chair, that means making sure that the lander is staying healthy enough from a power and thermal perspective to make sure we can stay powered on as long as we possibly can and that our data budgets are healthy and we can get as much data down as we can. Uh, we'll be helping prioritize different conflicting operations and uh, providing insight when anomalies occur, but that's our overall goal. We are operating for one lunar day on the surface. That's about 14 days. We are operating from sunrise to sunset. There's a lot of things that we have to monitor throughout the two weeks. As we get to lunar noon, a lot of things get really hot, so there are restrictions there on what can operate and what can't operate. So there's a lot that we're trying to fit in, but there's still some restrictions that we have to work around. And then of course on the other end, we plan to operate for several hours into the night. We're, we'll take some really interesting images of the sunset. Um, and then really operate as long as we can into the night. And then eventually things get really cold, so there's restrictions there as well. So we, we kind of have to work out our mission operations plan to maximize the amount of science we can bring down for that two weeks. It's been an amazing journey to be on console. My team and myself, we had our hands on every piece of the hardware from the assembly. We were there every step of the way for the testing, both here in California and in Florida. We watched it launch from the beach. And so to get to wrap it all up by being on console and see how well it's doing uh, through all the challenges and everything, it's just been really rewarding for me personally and gives me a, a great sense of pride for what I've been able to contribute and also what my team has, has done. For me, it feels 
really exciting to get there. This is what we've been working for. We've had a lot of those payload operations, you know, during transit, but the majority of those payload operations are going to be on the surface. So it's really going to be the payload's mission at that point. We're going to make sure that we are able to support all of these payload mission objectives. And that's what I've been working for over the past four years. I am just looking forward to that, looking forward to just getting the work done and celebrating for a little bit when we have a successful touchdown, but just kind of getting heads down, making sure that we're not wasting any time, that we're using those two weeks and using them to the maximum that, that we can to get all of the, the data down that we can during that time.